This is me in October. This was me three months later. And this is me now. It had to be you. Welcome back to the Glow Up Challenge, everybody. This is a challenge where I try to turn myself from one of you guys into the most handsome Asian stud. We have completed the challenge. What you're seeing now is the final result. Let's give some backstory. Why did I glow down in the first place? I glowed down to show you guys that glowing up is easy. I wanted you guys to glow up with me. All right. I know you guys see a lot of TikToks, a lot of Instagram reels, a lot of YouTube videos, transformation out of nowhere. They just become a sexy beast. But no one actually shows the process. I showed you the process of myself glowing up these past eight weeks. I've posted a video for each week. You guys can watch it if you want or not. I'm gonna be yapping a lot in this video. Yapping everything that's important. So, watch this. So, was glowing up easy? Hell no, it was not easy. The things I suffered in this cut, in this glow up challenge, I, I lost my best friend. I lost my boy, I lost my, I lost my, I lost my companion. Starts with a C. You know who C is? Carbohydrates. I had to break up with carbohydrates. I had to split ways with carbs. Splitting ways isn't easy. I know you guys wouldn't know because you guys have never been in a relationship before. Bum. As every toxic relationship, what happens? They get back together. So your boy didn't actually quit carbs. I hopped back on that shit week three. <laughs> don't, don't do what I did though. You guys stay off the carb. You guys break up with carbs. That's the only way for discipline, mentality, mindset, success. For me though, I'll be eating whatever. Hey, it's worked. Eight weeks ago, you guys insulted me. You guys called me King Henry. Nah, King Hungry. King Hev, Queso's Asian brother, John Cook. Y'all said instead of crying tears, I was crying oil. Chill, bro. You ain't gonna like do me. Shorty. But now look at me. King Handsome. You are so hot. Stop, chill. You are so humble. Chill. I ain't even that good looking. You'll come around if I don't do too much. Let's get straight to business chat. All right, y'all wanna go up? I'm gonna need y'all to watch this video in its entirety. Don't skip an ad. Someone's gonna fund my bulk, so don't skip an ad. This video alone will take me like at least 10 hours to make, to film, to edit, to make a thumbnail. It's a lot of work, believe it or not, this YouTube shit, you know? Trust me, I swear. Say what? Maybe I'm a slow worker, but I want my things to come out nice, clean, and pretty like me. Let's get straight to business. What this video will include, weight loss, weightlifting, skincare, mewing, gua sha. First, let's go over skincare. This was my skin eight weeks ago. Looks like a pepperoni pizza, but that was my skin. Pimples, disgusting, oily. It's my skin now. No filters, darling, nothing at all. So how did I get clear skin in such a short period of time while all of you struggled your entire life to get clear skin? Here's a secret. The one product I use that got me clear skin Peg peg juice. No, but for real, it's genetics, unfortunately. I know a lot of people who spend hundreds, if not thousands, on skincare, yet their skin looks like I just stepped on it and farted on it. Just the way the world works. 
But this doesn't mean you should don't be discouraged. This doesn't mean you have bad genetics. When my skin was bad, that's because I didn't take care of it. I skipped my skincare routine. I ate oily foods. I lived a unhealthy lifestyle. Now, dare I say it's pretty fucking good. And I will show you what I did. I will be making skincare videos. <clears throat> How to build the perfect routine for you. Even though I posted my morning routine and my night routine, it doesn't mean my routines will work for you because everybody's skin is different. Everybody has a different skin type. For me, it's dry and oily. Combination. Around here, 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 here is very oily. And if I don't treat it properly, I look dear Skarstein. I, I do not look, I'm just not pleasant to look at if I let these areas untreated. So don't just copy my skincare routine blindly. Even though a lot of people have, and they said it's worked amazing, doesn't mean it'll work for you. So do it at your own discretion. However, for people with oily skin in these areas, I recommend this product with my life. I am not sponsored by them. I wish I was. I've been trying to actually, but they they won't li they don't they don't like a yapper like me. Right, they don't like they don't like a yapper like me. But you know what? I'ma just put y'all on because it's that good. Paul is choice chemical exfoliant salicylic acid. Without this product, I would look exactly like you guys, disgusting and oily. But this product is it's it's the holy grail of all products. All right. I don't care what the hell's in the ingredients. It could be hepatitis. It could be malaria in the fucking ingredients. I don't care, it works. Look at me. Of course, do your own research before you know you buy it. It's pretty cheap, it's like 30 bucks. But yeah. And the second product that, I, that, that saved my skin. Can y'all guess what it is? I'm gonna give y'all five seconds. It's. It's kind of like a moisturizer. It's like a balm. Five seconds. Bro, he's really trying to make this a long video. It is Cicaplast Balmy from La Roche Pussy. This is the godsend product. This makes my skin not only glow, it stays glowing for hours on end. Hydration. Let's give it up for La Roche Pussy. I need some pussy. The second thing I did that transformed my skin is stop eating like a fatty. I stopped eating McDonald's. I stopped eating KFC. I stopped eating dirty, oily foods every day. I ate cleaner foods. Chicken breast, rice, veggies, get your micronutrients. I made sure my gut health was healthy. I made ginger shots with turmeric and all that shit. I made sure the body was healthy. Therefore, my skin is healthy. What is that drip, Kurt? Check it out. <laughs> shit be hella cold. We really, we've been out here and see it. We, we, yeah. <laughs> we out in the city right now, man. It's uh, it's uh, Maddie Grass. Hashtag LGBTQ, man. LeBron gives back to the community. <laughs> Bro, chill, man. Vlog, vlog. Oh. Yo, the audio cut out, but guys, I just really want to say thank you for watching this series, man. Um, to be honest, recently I got diagnosed with something very serious, and it's kind of hard for me to say what it is. There's a very rare condition out there. It's called locked-in syndrome. It's terrifying. Okay. 
going out drinking alcohol, make sure you go on an empty stomach. That'll make you less fat because you black out quicker. My boy is Chinese drinking gan tu. Oh, it's like um, <laughs> like an orange, or orange like sweet thing, like tamarind. Is that what it's called? Tamarind. Tamarind. Yeah. Oh, tamarind. Tamarind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, I have no idea. Is that real? I just made it up. <laughs> What's good, chat? It's the day after. Your boy ain't hung over. I probably got to hit cardio today. I just came back from grocery shopping and shit. Y'all ever just park and like sit in your car for like, I don't know, 10 minutes? Because the world be so intoxicating, the world be so negative that you just wanna escape from the noise. Couldn't be me, man. I'm just sitting in here because my ass too lazy to get out. <laughs> oh, fuck me. I think I got something in my eye. And we dance all out to the Let's talk about weight loss, which I personally believe is the most important factor in glowing up. You guys don't really understand how much having fat can change your face, can change your body, can change the way you look in clothes, can change the way you feel. For most people, being fat and obese makes them feel like shit. For me, it was bliss. It was a piece in my life that I didn't know I could achieve. Why? Because I got the one thing I wanted. To eat whatever the frick I want. And it was darn good. This was my physique eight weeks ago at the start of the Glow Up Challenge. I know. King heavy, king hungry, queso's Asian brother. Jean cooked King Henry A a bit too much. I've heard it, all right? I've heard it all. Trust me, I've heard it all. I was about 22% body fat. I gained eight to 10 kilos, which is about 22 pounds in only three months. And I've said this before. Yes, I did gain that much on purpose. I wanted to look as ugly as possible, glow down, so I can do this glow up challenge. And I know a lot of you guys are saying, bro, you just did that so you could, that was just an excuse for you to do whatever you want. Guys, don't act like I'm not enjoying myself glowing down. Probably the best time of my life. No restriction, no limits. Ate whatever, whenever. I went to Vietnam during the glow down time. Who do you think I want to say no to fucking ball call, to call, fur, ball, fur guy, dog? <laughs> Y'all, I'm, I'm playing. Right. You really think I'm gonna say? You really think I'm gonna say no to the goat boom boy? Hell no! I ate, I ate so many Viet dishes in Vietnam. Like probably like five, six, seven, eight meals a day. There was one day where I visited eight different restaurants and ate their top selling dish. It's actually, I posted a video about it actually before, if you guys wanna watch. When it comes to eating, your boy doesn't play. I'm a real eater, I'm a munch. So the transformation from that to this. Eight weeks, I lost nine kilos. That is also 20 pounds-ish. You guys might think it's a lot. You guys might think it's not a lot. It definitely is a lot. Because I went from 22% body fat to around 16. Could I have gotten further? Yes. If I said no to going out drinking alcohol with my friends and eating K barbecue, eating Japanese barbecue, yakiniku, eating my mum's cooking. If I said no to that, I would definitely be six pack shredded abs Chris Hemsworth, Avengers level threat right now. But I'm not gonna say no to my mama. She cooks, I eat. It's called respect. And a bit of a little temptation. My waist went from 36 inches to 28. That's progress if you ask me. And I believe it can go even further. Believe me, I'm not stopping the cut now. You're probably wondering, Henry, what was your strict regimen? 
What was your diet like to lose all this weight in such a short period of time? I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it on guard. I'm gonna keep it wallow. I did not eat chicken breast every day. No. I did not eat water for dinner. I didn't starve myself. I ate my mum's cooking. She's vid. She produces bangers of dishes. I'm not gonna say no to Balkov. I'm not gonna say no to Fogger. You know what I'm mean? saying? I'm not gonna say no to that. If there's food, I consume. Simple as that. But that doesn't mean you should be lazy. If you overeat, you should overwork. There was this one time where I went to a Chinese restaurant and I was eating with my friend and his girlfriend and his girlfriend Mind you, we let her do the ordering. I thought she would take the cut into consideration, you know? She did not. She ordered like 50 dumplings. 50 dumplings. It's not small, it's pretty big. It was like pan fried shaolong bao and like many other stuff. She ordered noodles. She ordered fried rice at a Chinese restaurant. This isn't a restaurant where they use where they use, you know, good macro foods. They pump that shit with oil. It's over for me. And of course, not to be like a racist or anything, but she's a girl. So she stopped eating five minutes in. So what did the boys have to do? We ate that shit. You know, we literally ate every dumpling. All the fried rice. I, oh my god, I just, I could have just taken it away. That's a smart idea, I, damn, I, I don't know how I didn't think of that. Point is, I ate four to five thousand calories. After food, I went straight to the gym and I spent not one, not two, but three hours on the treadmill, incline walking, three hours. I burnt about 1,800 calories. Before that, I already did my 10,000 steps and I did weightlifting. So overall, the 4,000 calories I consumed wasn't that bad. I was still in a calorie deficit by the end of the day. There is no such thing as a cheat day, all right? If you guys eat over, just work it off. Simple as that. Done. Enough about what I ate. This is the foods you guys should eat. Not me, coaches don't play, but you guys should listen because this is most optimal for weight loss. You should eat foods high in protein, high in healthy fats, and low in carbs. This is the best way for you guys to lose weight quick. Here are some examples of the foods that you can cook or you can buy. Let's talk about diet. Me? I consumed 1,500 calories every day. That was the original plan. But due to unforeseen circumstances of me being a fatty, I ate about 1,800 to 2,000 calories a day. Granted, there were some days I did three to 4,000 calories, but you know, I did cardio to compensate. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. How much of a deficit should you be in? I recommend going into an 800 calorie deficit first. And if you can handle that, I suggest increasing the deficit. Guys, going into a deficit this big won't kill you because you're doing it for a short period of time. You will also not lose any muscle because your protein will be 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. Very high, high quality protein. Your hormones your energy levels will be completely fine. Why? Because you're eating healthy fats. 
How much? One third of your body weight should be fat. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be consuming about 70-ish grams of fat. As for carbs, it really does not matter. Carbs are only important prior to a weightlifting session. All right. Other than that, you don't need to consume carbs at all. I say that, but I consume myself a billion grams of carbs. But don't do what I do. Do as I say. I get asked a lot, Henry, how do you have so much discipline to prevent food cravings? First of all, I don't. Clearly. But as again, don't do as I do, do as I say. To prevent food cravings, there is no secret to it, all right? You're not gonna drink a certain liquid or eat a certain food and then out of nowhere, you're not hungry anymore. That's not how it works, all right? It's a mental thing. Ask yourself this, if you eat this much, can you compensate in the gym and work it off on the same day? If you can't confidently say yes, do not eat it. Do you really want to keep looking like that? Do you really want to look like the average Valorant player? Look in the mirror. That is who you are. Do you want to keep being like that? Let's talk about my favorite thing in the world. Cardio. Ooh. I get asked a lot, Henry, what do I do for cardio? What machine do I use? Guys, it does not matter what you do for cardio. As long as you are burning the calories. So do what you want to do. However, for me personally, I utilize the incline treadmill. My settings were 12 incline and 4.4 kilometers an hour. This pace was very chill for me. It basically felt like I was going for a nice little brisk walk. By the sun, by the sunshine, by the river. It didn't even feel like I was doing cardio. That's why I did it so often, you know. I would just pull up a K-drama. I would pull up a manhwa. Silent War Secret Class. I would read it. I would watch a show while I just went for a nice little brisk walk. In an hour, I burnt 600 calories with this setting. Of course, you can go even higher. You could up the incline, up the speed. It's your preference, all right? As long as you are burning the calories. Now... There is risk in doing high intensity cardio, not HIIT workouts, workouts like even the Stairmaster. Stairmaster on level 10 for a long period of time, that will burn over a thousand calories. However, there is a good chance that it might affect your weightlifting session and it might affect your energy levels throughout the day. Last year, I conquered the Stairmaster. That is a video yet to be made, but I burnt 1,100 calories on the Stairmaster in one go, in about an hour. Yes, I burnt a lot of calories in such a short period of time, but it did affect my strength when I went weightlifting. And I tell you what, the entire day I was, I was boom, boom, I was gassed in it, I was gone. I went for a little nap that became sleeping. I was gone. I don't recommend high intensity cardio like that if you still want to maintain muscle and keep your strength in the gym. Do low intensity, incline treadmill. In these eight weeks, I did wow. 95 hours of cardio. That is almost four full days of me on the treadmill and the stairmaster. That is a lot of goddamn time. I could have done so many other things instead of cardio. I could have caught up to Silent Wars. I, I could have caught up to so many of these action-packed manhwa that I love to read. But my ass was on cardio. 95 hours. If you guys don't believe me, I posted every video. You guys can add it up for yourself. Week eight alone, I burnt 1,000 calories every single day in week eight. Why the hell would you do that? I just wanted to increase the stakes. I wanted to show you guys. You can achieve anything you want 
You could lose as much weight, you could eat whatever, as long as you put in the work on cardio. Here is me doing cardio this week. Let's talk about the magic product, the looks maxing product, the Gua Sha. I used the Gua Sha for the past 30 days. I started in week four and I have been using it mostly every day. I would miss a day or two in a week, but basically every day. Has it made changes to my face? I don't think so. However, it does what it's intended to do. De-bloat your face. I use it in the morning before I go out and it gets rid of my morning face bloat. So yes, it does work for that. Will it spawn in a jawline? I'm not sure. I've always had a jawline, so I don't know. You guys can do this. I've seen results from other people showing that it has worked. It has, you know, helped them define the jaw one. But for me personally, it has not. Maybe I just gotta use it longer. I will keep using it and I will update you guys. I will make a video, the effects of Gua Sha in 69 days. Here's my routine. The Gua Sha routine, ignore the, you know, juices on my face. This is just a toner. You obviously don't want to use the gua sha when your face is like fucking dry or else you're just going to rip your face apart and look like Quasimodo. So make sure to put your toners on. And before you use the gua sha, you got to massage your lymph nodes. Honestly, no idea what the fuck that means. Kind of looks stupid, but like I saw a dude do it and I was like, he probably, he probably spit it. You're probably doing some, right? Now, a lot of people use like face oils for just the moisturizer before they put the gua sha on. I like to use mix some bean essence. Snail which is but the better version. It makes the gua sha glide off your face, which is what you want. Make sure you clean your gua sha with soap. You don't want to use it, you know, after you've already used it and chucked it somewhere. That's an easy way to break out. First step, you want to start from ear down here. Ten times. It's a little red, but that's okay. That's just your blood. Your blood pumping. Your blood. It's, it's chill. It's not. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Been doing this shit for like a month. This shit is low key and bothersome. This adds a whole another like five, ten minutes to my routine. But hey, someone's got to do it. It's okay. Red's okay. Next up. I just did this the jawline. As you can see, this is me relaxed. Your boy's got a little bit of a double chin. You want to use this side, the flat side. Now for the actual jawline, you want to use this side. As you can see, it's already given me a little bit more definition. It didn't spawn in the jawline, it just de bloated my face to show what you know, it really is.
That's all. Let's talk about Nui. Did I moo in this glow up challenge? Yes, I did. Every second I got, no. I mooed when I remembered to, which was maybe, I don't know, 20% of when I'm awake. But I'm always mooing when, you know, when I need to. Does mooing work? There is no scientific study that it works. Anecdotally, is that a word? I don't know. But in my humble experience, I believe it does work. This used to be my jawline before I started mooing back in high school. This is my jawline now. However, that could just be due to puberty. That could be due to many other factors that we don't know. So should you moo or should you not? That shouldn't be the question. The question should be, why not? How does mooing affect you negatively in any way? It doesn't. Science does say it trains your masseter muscles. So it gives you a jawline from the front. It creates a V shape. On to the subject that everybody has been yapping to me these entire eight weeks. Weightlifting. Guys, I will show you what I did in a on a chest day. I had chest, I had biceps and shoulders. This is what I did. Beautiful girl. Bro's really doing stand on the side. Look at you. Did you notice anything? I didn't train to absolute failure. Why? Why did I not train to absolute failure? Doesn't everyone say train to failure? Intensity, you get the most gain. 
No, you won't actually. The best way to train is training one RIR. What does that mean? One rep in reserve, meaning you want to train one rep before you fail. All right. You don't want to go balls to the walls. You just want to stop right as you get there. Why is this better, you ask? When everybody says you have to train failure, why is someone with not that much muscle mass and a lot of yapping telling me to not do what every professional says? Because I believe in my king, my go, Paul Carter. This is the most knowledgeable man on earth about hypertrophy, all right? Whatever he says goes. But of course, you don't have to listen to people blindly. He provided a citation. This is a full reviewed research study on why training to failure isn't as good as training one RIR. So if you guys have the capability, read it yourself. And guess what? You come to the same conclusion. Guys, I'm about to change your entire way of thinking when it comes to weightlifting or when it comes to just life in general. I know a lot of you think you should listen to the most successful, the most buff person on earth. So you do what Arnold says or you do what your favorite TikTok influencer says. This is a very normal way of thinking. They're buff, therefore their methods work for them, therefore it's probably correct. So I should do that. This is not how the world works. This is not how science works, all right? Let me ask you this question. You are laying on your deathbed. You are suffering from fat motherfucker-itis, all right? And you have two options to save yourself. The first option is you have a friend who also suffered from fat motherfucker-itis. And he tells you to eat five peanuts to completely be ridden of the disease. Second option, there is a great scientist, a great doctor with many achievements telling you five peanuts is not the best way to get rid of fat motherfucker itis. It's actually eating two oranges. You're laying on your deathbed, all right? This doctor comes to you with evidence. Evidence as to why the two oranges would work. You're laying on your deathbed. You're gonna die in a minute. You have to make a decision. What decision are you making? Are you gonna listen to your mate? Or are you gonna listen to the world renowned doctor with evidence? You see what I mean? You see what I mean? So why in the world would you blindly listen to people who just yap and is big? It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Why would you not listen and read evidence? Evidence. Hey, train however you want, whatever you enjoy. I'm just telling you guys. And that is all. That is what I did to grow up, to become this now. There are other things to do, of course. Honorable mentions like getting good quality sleep. You, would, you want at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Deep sleep. Some people struggle with this. I used to struggle with it too. I used to wake up every three hours for no reason. I wake up, back to sleep. Wake up, back to sleep. Ever since I started taking magnesium glycinate pills, my sleep has been long and deep. That's what she said. Why'd I just say that? Am I 12? 20 actually. Anyway, taking these pills change my sleep quality. It knocks me out. It doesn't make you go sleep faster, but it makes the quality of your sleep much better. Is there any side effects? Nothing too negative. However, your dreams is going to be crazy. I've lived many lives when I take these pills. When I, the dreams that I have on these pills are next level. This one time I lived as a cabinet for a family of four. 
for like, it felt like a week. I was a cabinet. They would open me and close me and take shit out. I was, yeah, these dreams are crazy. But you also got the cool ones, you know. One time I was hanging out with his mom. I'm going to keep that private. But you already know, you, you already know what happened. Another great honorable mention, being hydrated. Guys, you need water. You need to drink at least three liters of water a day. Come on, you could, three liters is easy. That's like five bottles of water. Pump it through. Water will literally make everything in your life better. You'll be more hydrated. Your lips will have better color. Your skin will be better. Your eye bags will be better. Your sleep will be better. You'll be stronger. You have more energy. Water is truly the thing that everybody neglects that has the most impact. Let's talk about hair. Hair is actually one of the most important factors in looking better, all right? Guys, I've been through many hairstyles. Here's some. I know, I've been through it. But I've also had many great hairstyles. Here's to show some. Right now, this is my hair, uncut. My last hairstyle, as you guys see right here, it ruined me. It set me back months of hard work of growing my hair. But now this is my hair. It's been growing out for two to three months. I haven't gotten a haircut in that long. It's very long. If you guys wanna, if you guys want this hair, it's very simple. It's just a long grown out middle part with a mullet. This is what it will look like. If you wanna ask your barber that, but like you kind of just grow it out. Middle part mullet, simple as that. How do I maintain my hair? How does it look so silky smooth and healthy? These are the products I use. I used. I shampoo every two to three days and I conditioner every night. That is what I do to maintain my hair looking silky smooth. Now, before I go out, you know, if I'm hitting the club or if I'm just going out for a little nice show and I want, and I want my hair to look nice, I apply some texturizing sea salt spray. You could honestly use whatever you want. Anything works for me. Other than that, I don't really use anything else. This is not my final transformation, chat. I'm growing out my hair this long so I could get a perm everywhere later and be have like a curly wolf cut. That, that, is, that will be my final transformation. That is my Goku Super Saiyan. I'm base form right now. Yup, chat, y'all are not ready. Y'all are not ready for my final form. Give me two to three months before I get another perm. If you're wondering what hairstyle, what haircut you should get, it's actually very simple. Search out what face shape you have. And even then, it can get quite confusing. So I'll make it even more simple for you. If you have a big forehead, cover it, get a fringe. Or get, get a hairstyle that covers your big ass forehead. Simple as that. If you got big ears like me, I got pretty big ears. Grow out long hair like this, you know, it kind of covers it, creates the illusion that it's not that big. And if you also have big ears, another way to counter big ears is having a long back. When you have a long back, it kind of serves as like a little shadow behind it. So you can't really, you know, tell that you have gigantic ass ears. Because let me show you what I look like if I didn't have a long back. I look like an elf. I look like a monkey. Do I still? Maybe a little. But you, you, you see what I mean? You know what I'm if your head is very long, then you don't want a hairstyle like a that makes it even longer. Simple as that. If you have a wide ass head, 
You don't want a hairstyle that makes your head look even wider. You want to make it look longer. This is very simple styling tips, chat. You're probably wondering, how do you say all this, yet your haircut and hairstyles always get messed up? I don't got control over that. It just happens. All right, I, t I tell them one thing and it just comes out. But not anymore, I'm not taking any more risk. Enough about glowing up. It's time we get serious. It's time we talk about discipline. It's time we talk about inspiration, motivation, mental health. In high school, me and two other friends, we developed this secret formula. This formula is basically the key to life. We call it the three B's. Once you achieve all three B's, it's over for you. The first B, broke. The second B, bold. The third B, bum. Once you achieve all three B's, this formula will form into one big B. You will become a buffoon. A buffoon. You can have any of these Bs, but once you achieve all three Bs, it's over for you. You need to quit life. It's done. You're done. Broke, you can't be broke. But people can't control their financial situation. So this is a common B people have. And it's okay as long as you're grinding towards not being broke. Bold. This is genetics, of course, but this is also due to stress. If you are stressing that much, you're losing hair and becoming bold. Yikes, that's two Bs already. But the third B, this is the most preventable B, being a bum. Once you're a bum, these other two Bs will just come along with it. Guys, the one thing you can control is not being Bum. Henry, how can I not be a bum? Tell me the ways to not be a bum. Guys, you're a bum right now. Let's be honest here. What did you do last year? Oh, I hit the gym. Oh, I went to work. Oh, I paid my bills. Oh, I did my laundry. You survived. Matt, you didn't do shit. You did what 95% of the population did too. You didn't do anything with your life. You're a bum. The first step of not being a bum is realizing you are a bum. All right. If you are offended, I'm sorry. Truth hurts. Right. So how do you not be a bum? actually very simple dedicate yourself to doing something you want to do in your life you want to become an actor go take lessons practice every day you want to get six-pack abs do the glow up challenge lose weight do cardio every day hours on hours not not the bare minimum chase your dreams pursue something don't be a bum Stop making excuses, all right? I have a few friends who are bums. They're so bummy that when I hang out with them, I'm like, damn, I used to be like this when I was 16. They're the same age as me, but they are a bum. But the worst part about these bums is that they don't accept that they're a bum. They talk as if they have three different side hustles. They always say, I'm a lock in, I'm a lock in. Try soon, 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 soon. I'm a lock in next week. I'm a lock in when I get this. I'm a lock in when uni starts. You ain't locking in shit. You locking in a guarantee for future debt, future disappointment. Come on now. All you have to do 
is do what you say you want to do and pursue something that you want to do. Not everybody has the privilege to do whatever they want to do, but everybody has the privilege to put time into anything. I get asked a lot, Henry, what is your inspiration? What is your motivation? How are you so committed to this? How are you so committed to everything that you do? You know, it's very, rather simple, really. It is rather simple. I am very fortunate. I always had a winning mindset, I guess. I don't want to lose. I don't want to fall behind. But it's not that I want to beat people in life. I just want to beat my own expectations of myself. It's a pretty good feeling when you do something way better than what you expected. That is my personal motivation. Plus, I don't want to be a bum. I don't want the three Bs. Come on now, can't be like that. When I want to give up, when I don't want to do it anymore, when I just want to quit, what brings me back? This scene right here, the Ivory Prison. Not only does he teach you quality life lessons about peace, calm, serenity, he also shows you that you can be your fucking boss. You can win. You could conquer and take while also being a very peaceful man. Why do I resonate with Iroh so much? He is a peaceful, calm man. He's very strong-willed and he gets what he wants whenever he wants. But most of all, he loves food just like I do. Let's talk about motivation and discipline. We've all heard it before. Discipline beats motivation. Motivation is very a short feeling. Of course, this is common sense, mate. A fucking a little rat would know that too. But let's be honest, you're a bum. You've never committed that hard to anything in your life to build a strong set of foundation discipline. So what can you do? Stop looking for things to motivate you to do something. Just do the same action again and again, repeat it day after day. And what do you think is going to happen in a month? Discipline. There you go. Because you've already done it for that long, it becomes a habit. It, bec it becomes part of you. All right. If I wanted to relate this to weight loss, if you have trouble motivating yourself to, you know, try to lose weight, glow up, just make it a habit of eating less every day or doing more work, doing more cardio, going for a walk. Just do the same thing every day. And believe me, you will have discipline by the end of it and good results too. You guys might be wondering, what's my motivation? It's actually very simple. No one really motivates me. I don't look for people to motivate me. I don't look for cool edits. I don't look for characters or ideologies to keep me motivated. I'm just a very grateful person. I am very blessed to have my life that I'm living. I am very blessed to have you guys as my audience. You guys are very loyal. You guys glaze me so much. Thank you so much for that. I am so much more privileged in life than so many others. There are so many people that are going through tough times that are literally dying they don't have food they don't have family there are so many people out there in the world going through real struggle my only struggle is getting out the fucking bed on time that's my only struggle so why would i sit here and complain about doing simple activities like doing cardio just go going for a walk i'm i can do cardio i'm privileged enough to be able to to go to a gym that has incredible technology for me to lose weight. I have the luxury of eating whatever I want. A lot of people don't. This is just me, but it's also you. You are privileged, my friend, all right? No matter what you're going through, everybody's going through something. I'm going through something, surprisingly, even though I just said my life's great. Well, I don't really care to share my private life on YouTube. But everybody's going through something. 
you're not special. Look at all the successful people now. Look at all the successful bodybuilders. Look at all the successful CEOs, business owners, celebrities even. A lot of successful people always go through something, but they're successful because they keep pushing. They understand the privilege that is just to live life. All right, you only have one life, man. What are you gonna do? Do nothing, complain? Don't, it's not good. If you don't have a family, even if you're getting bullied, even if you're going through anything that makes you remotely unmotivated and sad, just remember this, you have the ability to hear, to smell, to taste, to eat, to feel, that alone is one of the greatest gifts you could ever have in life. Because there are a lot of people on earth that don't have these. So stop your freaking complaining. Start appreciating life. Be grateful. Let's talk about time management. I know all of you are wondering, this motherfucker probably has no job. This motherfucker probably got no uni. He probably got no friends. How is he spending 95 hours on cardio in eight weeks? Still weightlifting four times a week. How does he have the time? Guys, it's all about how you manage your time and how you prioritize what you do in life. I have a job, yes. I go to uni, yes. I have classes. I go to them in person. It's not just online. I have a social life. I have a lot of friends. Thankfully, I have a lot of friends and I go and hang out with them very frequently. In the eight weeks, I went clubbing like four times. Four times. I would go out to eat at least, I don't know, two to three, four times a week. And I still showed up to my classes. I still went to work and I still did my cardio. I still, I still did my cardio. I still weight lifted. I still stuck to my goals. How is this possible? This guy probably gets no sleep. Guys, time management. It's so simple. It's so simple. Let me give you an example. On a day I don't have work, I have uni. My classes are about, let's say about four hours of my day. And transport is about an hour. So my time for uni is about five total hours in the morning. So 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. How many hours does that leave in my day? A lot. There's about 10 hours left in my day. I have time in these 10 hours to socialize. I have time to cook my own meals. I even have time to go to the club if I wanted to. Weight lift and do cardio. That's 10 hours. Now what if a super, super busy day. Let's say I had work at 9 a.m. I finish at 4 p.m. I had to do my homework and assignments, which took me until 7 p.m. I'm probably exhausted. Hey, we all get exhausted, but you gotta do what you gotta do. 7 p.m. to 8 to 9 p.m. I'm in the gym, weightlift, cardio, how many hours left in the day? Three, five more hours. Three to five more hours in your day that you can do whatever you want. It's all about managing your time properly. On a day that I would go clubbing, that means my entire night is gone. From 9 p.m. to like 4 a.m., I'm done. My sleep the next day is gonna be terrible too. So what do I do? Before I go clubbing, I do all the cardio I need to do. I do all the weightlifting. I do all my assignments. I finish it all. Guys, if you don't have time, make time. And if you miss a day, it's okay, right? It's not a race. You're not competing against anyone. Just do it the next day. And if you're doing this and you still don't have time, wake up earlier. Having one hour less sleep isn't gonna isn't gonna kill you. Learn to do things faster. Learn to multitask. When I was doing cardio, 
I would pull up my lectures and I would watch that and create notes while I'm doing cardio. Guys, be smart. It's not hard. Yes, it's exhausting. But you gotta do what you gotta do. We're nearing towards the end of the video. So I'm about to spit the most important part of the video. Why you should glow up. You might be heartbroken right now. Whether it's from a girl or a guy or whether you get bullied and you're sad and you wanna glow up so you can prove them wrong. This is not healthy. This is not a good approach to go about glowing up or improving yourself. Trust me, I know what it's like to be heartbroken. You guys know that I, I was going through it sometime last year. Seahawk, if y'all remember that. She got a new man now. <laughs> Whatever, don't care. Anyway, enough jokes. I was bedridden. I couldn't eat food. You guys know I be eating food and I couldn't even eat food. A fatty like me can't eat food. That's how heartbroken I was. I would stay in bed all day. Before I sleep, I would play seasons by wave to earth for hours. I would wallow in sadness. I was so sad that when I was in the shower, I just burst in tears. I'd be like, damn, bro. Babe, come, baby, come back, please. I didn't even do nothing. It was definitely my fault that day. But enough about that. Point is, I didn't go to the gym. I didn't want to have a villain arc. That shit is so corny. I didn't want to prove them wrong. I didn't want to show them, oh, who's up now? Oh, look at me. I lost weight. I look good now. I didn't want to do that. Because that isn't healthy. And you shouldn't either. Guys. Let's say you spend months glowing up. Yeah, you look good. Congrats. And you want to prove your ex wrong. You go to them and you realize they don't care. Trust me, they do not care. You wasted your time thinking about her, trying to improve yourself, doing all this, doing all that, being on your villain arc, but they don't care. And then you realize, wait, what was the whole point of this? I wasted my time. Oh, at least I have abs now, but you're not happy. You're not proud of your results. You're not proud of the hard work you put in. This is so common among everyone. Everybody, you know, they work so hard for their body or they work so hard to make money and they're still sad afterwards. Why? Very simple. Because it's all about why you do it. All right? And if you do it to prove someone wrong or show someone you're better now, you would not be happy. However, if you improved yourself in any way, glowed up, make more money for yourself, you will be very proud of your results, no matter what the results are. You'll be proud of the process you took. You'll be proud of the hard work you put in to achieve this. Trust me, guys. Don't do it for anyone else but yourself, all right? Don't go to the gym because someone called you fat. You are fat, but don't go to the gym because of that. Go to the gym because you want to change yourself. You want to improve yourself. You want to, prove, you want to make it a point to yourself that you can lose weight. Yes, people will judge you. And yes, people have unwarranted expectations of you. People are always yapping, man. People always looking at you like, oh, what's, what's that bloke doing? What's he doing over there? What a try hard. I'm the same. I'm the judging too. If you're doing something stupid, I'm looking like, what the fuck? What are you doing? That's how people are. And that's something you've got to accept and ignore. All right? It's very important. Only you matter. Only what you think now. Don't burn yourself to keep others warm. Thank you to everybody who made it to the end of the video. I know I've been yapping, yapping, yapping. I've been yapping a lot. I really do hope you watch all the yaps. Someone's got to find my bulk. Thank you for watching, guys. And thank you for being with me on this glow-up journey and this series for a long, long eight weeks. Guys, my plans for the future. I am going to keep going. I have not reached my goal. My goal is to be model level lean. I want to have hollow cheeks constantly. I want to be very face lean. A very chiseled face. I also want abs and I also want to have a snatched waist. I want to achieve a 26 inch waist. That is my personal goal. So I'm not going to stop the cut. I'm going to keep continuing. But the goal.
a lot of challenges he's completed. Thank you guys so, so much for being along this journey with me. What are my plans for future content? After this Glow Up series, do not worry, chat. Do not worry. I'm going to purposely ruin my pretty good skin right now. I don't know how, but I'll figure out a way. I will try to get bad skin and I will try to glow up. I will try to fix my skin. And that way, you guys can do it with me. Just like this glow up series. But I believe that will be a very short series because I have great genetics. I hope. I feel like if I do this, I could get like acne scars and it might ruin me forever. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Fuck it. After that, this series I think you guys will love. I'll be helping my friend glow up instead of me. That way, for people who missed it or people who want to keep glowing up, you guys can join me and my friend along the journey. Then after that, I got Japan vlogs. We're going back to Japan, baby. I'm pumping out hella videos for Japan. I'm going to be doing like huge mukbangs. Your boy is going back. Your boy is going back to King Hungry. Trust me on that. If I'm in Japan, I'm eating everything. Anyway, enough yapping chat. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. See y'all next time. Beautiful girls, I could be chasing, but my time won't be